every year for the closing plenary, uh, what we've done historically is taken, there'd be like a set of trends and things in the, in the closing ceremonies. Fuck you! And, uh, <laughs> And uh, we'd find four or five talks that are all basically the same, and we'd be like, hey, guess what? You got accepted, but you all got to get on stage. It's going to be a panel. I'm going to throw shit at you. And um, this year, there really wasn't anything like that. And Heidi and, and Space Rogue and I think Ron uh, Gula as well had been kicking around this idea for a few years of doing like structured infosec debates. Uh, and we decided this was the year to try <laughs> infosec debates. <laughs> And there's not much that throws me off, but a hand puppet of myself is really weird, right? Like, this is... Yeah, exactly. Jack's got his hand up my ass, so... Uh, anyway... It's sweaty up there, by the way. It is, it is sweaty. I, I was there earlier. It's definitely... It's not pleasant, so... <laughs> Guys, it's a puppy. You know where all the jokes end up, right? Even the Sesame Street people like off script. There's like they go really blue. It's really disturbing. So, um, anyway, so what we're gonna do today? We're gonna go through um, and have a, a very what I'll call classic style debate. Where classic style is, I read an article on the internet about how a debate's supposed to work, and then Wendy helped me understand what they're really supposed to do. So if anything's gone wrong, it's actually her fault. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll run it. So the way it's going to work is there's, gonna, there's two topics that we've given them in advance. They don't know what topic they're going to get. I do. They don't know what pro or con they're going to get. I do. Um, and they also don't know what order they're going to get. I do as well. I think Jack may know what he's going to get <laughs> and what order he's going to get it in. And, and the rest of them, I think it's a dark, it's a dark mystery. So um, has anyone actually seen an actual formal debate? Wow. Has anyone on the debate team? Were you actually on the debate team? A handful of people? Um, is the debate team still a thing? Like, yeah, yeah okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the two topic areas that we chose, um, I'll introduce our panel here in a second, uh, were uh, cryptocurrency, uh, good or environmental disaster. That fad or future? I was, I was going to riff it, but I guess I'll keep it. I can't riff it. Fad or future? And the other one was consumer IoT. Um, something about... What? Something. Security, I don't know. It's, it's either, oh, climate control or burning down the house. Um, you know, is your thermostat trying to kill you? Uh, and so we're going to tackle IoT security, uh, consumer IoT security, and we're going to tackle cryptocurrency today. Um, and with that, I'd like to introduce our panel. Uh, to my immediate left is myself. Um, <laughs> and with his hand up my ass is Jack. Uh, Jack, you want to say a couple words about yourself? Um, my, I'm one of two Jacks on the panel. Um, some of you may know me as Dodger. Um, my current uh, role, I have a background in security and infrastructure. Fuck you! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I have a background in security and infrastructure. <laughs> and um, I currently am the uh, part of the team behind the Zcash cryptocurrency. So I wonder which topic I'm going to be getting. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, you want to hand it down to Liz? Yeah, hello. So, Lawyer Liz and hosts a weekly podcast radio show, Buzz Off with Lawyer Liz, and have the uh, fun during the week of handling all the technology projects uh, for a large city as well as the world's busiest airport. And no, I did not cause a fire. I had nothing to do with <laughs> it. But this is not my employer speaking. This is Liar Liz, who did not debate on the debate team. <laughs> Next up is uh, Gandalf. Hi. Hey. Hi. Thou shalt not pass. <laughs> like, can, you do, can you do that for me? So, uh, yeah. thou shalt not pass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the other Jack, Jack Daniel. Um, and you all know me because I'm the host organism for my beard. <laughs> uh, I'm Wendy Nather, and I am thrilled to have a pair of jacks here on the stage. I think, you know, that's all we're going to need. Um, but, uh, but I'm here anyway. I used to be a CISO, used to be an industry analyst, used to be a lot of things. Now I work for Duo Security. She, she also pronounces CISO correctly, so I, I thank you. I really appreciate that. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Okay, let's be super clear. We can have that as a debate topic. Do you want that? Like, we can just... <laughs> GIF! Wow. It's pronounced GIF. 
It's the Kizzo. Um, all right, so with that, the way this is going to work, uh, we're going to, uh, the first topic we're going to cover is um, uh, IoT, and we're going to have a four minute opening, a four minute response, a two minute rebuttal, and a two minute uh, rebuttal of the rebuttal, which probably has, like, it's like the second derivative of the rebuttal. I don't really know what it's called. Um, it's, it's, not it's not calculus. It feels like it up here, I assure you. So um, I would like to, uh, I've randomly drawn names out of my hat, <laughs> um, and uh, Liz will be uh, pro uh, consumer IoT. And, Woo! Uh, Wendy will be uh, uh, con consumer IoT. Um, and, <laughs> and just so we're clear, the battle of the jacks is Jack Daniel pro cryptocurrency and Dodger yes. con cryptocurrency. Also, in his panel, Dodger will go first to put him at the most extreme disadvantage possible. <laughs> that random draw of the hat will get you every time. Um, this, this is about me and that Trump mask last year, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't know, can you guys see the clocks okay if, if Dodger moves me? Um, you guys, we have the, over here the four minutes clock. These are um, uh, the, I don't know, the instructions were kind of comical. I think this will work out. If not, I'm going to need someone to come up here and be like, eight, seven, six, and just count down timer for me. Uh, there's code. So I don't, does anyone have a, a coin? Because I don't actually, I, you have a, oh, actually, got a Bitcoin. You got a Bitcoin? <laughs> He's got some Zcash in his pocket. I have a Bitcoin. The plastic Bitcoin he has. A coin. All right. That's a, that's, it's, it's an indeed a coin. That's a so, fake coin. So uh, Liz, I'll let you call it. Um, uh, heads, uh, you go first. Tails, uh, Wendy goes first. So I guess you've called it. Okay. okay uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is uh, tails. When he goes first, you get second. So, Excellent. with that, with our, our what, <laughs> that, that worked out well. That was super fair. I like it. Um, <laughs> yeah. With that, Wendy, are you uh, are you ready? No. Oh. Hell to the no. So that, but that's my my common condition. So here we go. Are All we right. ready? Yep. And uh, you're off. All right. So, you know, imagine you take computing back in the, in the 70s and the 80s and you decide, well, there just isn't enough of it and it isn't done by enough non-experts and uh, there's not enough cascading failure in it and um, we, we want everything to have bright LEDs because that's the future and that's what you have with consumer IoT. Um, uh, the other day, I ran into a, a Kickstarter online that was for internet-connected shoes. <laughs> and the whole idea was that you, you know, could, could uh, download your own designs and display them on the shoes. And my first thought was school dress code violation. Because I would totally send bad words to my friend Jack's shoes in the middle of class and get him in trouble. Or I would, you know, put my class notes during a test on my shoes and look at them. But no, that wasn't enough because they wanted to build a marketplace to sell and exchange designs. And I thought, well, because adding money to consumer IoT always makes things better. <laughs> and so it, this is where we are going with a large contingent of manufacturers and people who have never had anything to do, first of all, with IT and secondly, with security. Um, so that's going to work out just great. Um, you, you have everything from manufacturers who've been building the same thing for 80 years and they know how it works and they know how it goes. And they look at the IT people in the other building and go, oh, isn't that cute? Just stay over there. Stay out of our way. We know how this works. And the IT people are looking at the security people and going, oh, aren't you cute? Just stay over there. Um, so, you know, we, we are just heading for a whole mess of trouble from everything from the cost of cellular service for these internet connected things. Um, demotivating the use of, are you all right, sir? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, de you know, demotivating the use of uh, encryption for those connections. Uh, so all sorts of financial dynamics that are going to de-incentivize actually securing these things. Uh, we're going to have all sorts of kinetic effects, uh, the likes of which you haven't seen before that may or may not have anything to do with shoes. Um, but first, let, let, let's take a step back and just think about what the tenets are for consumer IoT. They're surprise and fear. No, wait. Surprise, fear, ruthless efficiency, uh, and, and almost fanatical devotion to the Pope. Wait, wait. 
that, 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 that was the wrong position. I'm sorry. Um, nobody expects the IoT Inquisition. Uh, we, are, we are so not ready for this. How am I doing on time? You got, you got a minute. I got a minute. All right. Um, so let me argue it on the other side. No. Um, <laughs> We, we can we can pass the baton if that's your yeah. Your let, whole let's go argument. ahead and okay. pass the baton. I, th I this, think I played out. This is this is the part where I try to figure out how I'm going to program this this thing. See, you see what I mean? You see what I'm talking about here? If Bruce cannot figure it out, I, I it's not good for America. To make this more fair, I penalize Liz by two seconds. So uh, <laughs> excellent, excellent. I like the handicap. Yes, actually, it. are you ready? Absolutely. All right, we're but, we're off. I say, and the world's burning. Sure. And when you look at automobiles, when we first started off, there was a lot of work to be done. That you had cars that did not have the safety features we have now. You had cars that didn't have the gas mileage that we have now. You have all these things. So sure, the world's burning, but with a connected world and taking some precautions, yes, You'll know exactly where the, where the world is burning at that time. You'll know at the rate of consumption <laughs> at which it's burning. And you will be able to go in and, and be able to allocate the resources to put out the fire. Or if you're Jack, you will know when to take off the pants and start <laughs> running. The internet-connected pants. It, you know what? And if they are, they will have been used in his connected bathroom with his Kohler connected toilet. And uh, I'm trying to think of all the other things that came out of uh, CES this week. And yes, there is a lot of FUD and fail that, is, that comes out of it, but we're learning and we're doing better. And with that, when you look at cities and being able to determine you know, where the resources are, traffic, traffic's a problem. You sit in traffic and you have all the emissions. Well, knowing that your car has connected to the traffic lights, that the traffic lights are adjusting the system, that sure, folks may have gone into the baby monitor and may be teaching your child satanic verses, um, <laughs> and that's okay. Or um, as happens on occasion, Mbop might be playing across speakers <laughs> at any given time. But when you start taking a step back, and just as we've learned with the automobiles, you bake in security. You teach people how to segment. You take some responsibility. To <laughs> you have responsibility with you know, learning how to, again, build in the security measures. And as we saw with the FTC this past week, taking one of the children's, you know, was it Logitech? No, not Logitech. Uh, VTech, thank you. Um, and saying, all right, y'all have collected 3 million children's accounts information. They're using these uh, devices. They're you know, playing and learning. $650,000, and that's just the beginning. And finding them. So putting out the warning and saying, all right, you can't have the free-for-all. It's not the Wild West anymore. But there is some good to be found from the connected devices. Cool. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to awkwardly do that, and I'm going to come down here. Wendy, you have two minutes to rebut. Um, feel free to use as much of that time as you would like. Um, there you go. Okay. <laughs> because, uh, you know, I put the butt in rebuttal. There you go. <laughs> So, uh, so actually, Liz made a lot of my rebuttal arguments for me in in <laughs> in her discussion. So, yes, uh, you know, absolutely, we will know where things are on fire exactly, so we can dispatch things. Um, we we will. Um, it, you know what? Everything's going to be fine. Everything's <laughs> going to be just fine with IoT. Um, you know, it, it, it's all good. It, it, you know, it, Jack's internet connected pants will provide entertainment for not only grown ups, but children via their baby monitors. Exactly. And, you, you know, oh. and you can't start kids too early. Um, <laughs> Yes, in most states you can. Like, yeah. <laughs> usually 16. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the update on Arkansas, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but seriously, the, the FTC will, yes, is addressing these sort of things with their Build Security First in initiative. Um, I've taken part in that. And uh, I really look forward to the FTC saying stop, or we'll say stop again. <laughs> Especially to all the IoT things that are made outside of the United States, mm -hmm. which are approximately 99% of them. So, um, yes, it, it, everything will be just fine. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Uh, there you go. She's got an index card for that. I do. I definitely, it's definitely. <laughs> oh, crap. Because it's not connected. If it was an oh. IoT connected device, <laughs> I would be able to bring it up immediately. But not only that, you have to think of for the children. <laughs> and. Anytime you can think of the children and you can give them an opportunity to be a superhero. To be a, to, you know what? To be able to connect with their cohorts around the world. It, it helps. And the children are the future. The connected, connected future. And just because government wants to have your information, it's okay. They're watching. <laughs> they are. But then again, you can watch the government if the government's collecting the data. But it is. It's bringing in and baking in those protections and realizing that it's not a free-for-all, that while it is burning, it will be okay. Because we will know when to send in the drones that will drop the water <laughs> that will put it out. All for right. the children. Well, on, on, on the, we've, we got to the children part, so I think we're, <laughs> we're good. Oh, um, I want to do a little post-mortem uh, on, on this, and then I, I want to let that damn thing, it actually makes noise. Like, I spent time sourcing this clock on Amazon, so I really want it to beep. Like, it was been waiting for the obnoxious beep, and it hasn't beeped, so it's going to beep soon. And the fact that nobody figured out how to make it beep on their own, <laughs> I'm judging every single person in this room. It's probably a TV be gone that would turn it off. Um, so it seems that to me that the, the two sides of the argument, I'd like to get the Jack's opinions. Um, see, look at, look at, it flashes, it beeps. Let's hear it for the clock made in China that's listening to us. Hey, I can flash and beep too. <laughs> <laughs> I like as Jack has gotten older, he's got more risque. <laughs> he's like the Benjamin Buttons of like social awareness. <laughs> he went the other direction. Started out conservative and just got like wildly 18 as he got older. Uh, <laughs> hey, does does she look 62 to you? She's on OK Cupid and just sent me a message. <laughs> Is she here? She have the Russian flag behind her. Um, so it, it, the argument to me, it seemed to boil down to that um, uh, the uh, from Liz, it was that in the long term, this is all going to shake out. Like there'll be regulations, there'll be better practices, there's better benefits than what the short term risks are. Uh, and Wendy's uh, view of the world was basically like this is all unnecessary, nonsensical. Like people on Kickstarter in Brooklyn doing silly things. Um, and no offense to the BK people in the room, but you all do silly things. Um, <laughs> and and that the the the, uh, the benefits don't outweigh the risks associated with these products. So I'm curious what the Jacks Jacks think of things. Which Jack? Either one. I'll put, I'll put Dodger on. Point. We're a hive mind. Uh, yes. <laughs> we could complete each other's lunches? No, sentences. I'm the young foolish one. Okay. And Jack Daniel is the old foolish one. Perfect. Um, I, th I think there's two things to be worried about with Internet of Things. Number one, there's the, is somebody going to hack into my fridge and order 500 steaks from Amazon to be delivered, you know, via, via Prime to my house, you know? I mean, 500 steaks, that's a good month or two of... <laughs> <laughs> My boss, who is probably watching this, um, would, would be delighted if 500 steaks turned up at his house. But I think the, the, the idea that your, your credit card is probably connected in some way to that order might, might, uh, might, might temper your enthusiasm. But then there's, the, there, there's also the question of, uh, of the data that gets collected. You know, are you suddenly going to find that your insurance premiums 
have gone up because the heating data from your, 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 your home uh, air conditioning system or whatever shows that you're out every weekend until two, three o'clock in the morning. Not that anybody here would stay up that late, we, I'm we, sure. We, we, we. Um, People go to bed that early? Sorry, go ahead. People go to bed that early? <laughs> Not this crowd. <laughs> But you, there's, there's, there's more to it than just the simple and straightforward, oh, hey, we're going to take over all these devices and use them to, uh, as a botnet to attack Brian Krebs' website. There are deeper implications. Um, <laughs> regulatory uh, you know, rules do traditionally take a while to catch up. I agree that they, that they will come sooner or later. But uh, in the meantime, I think you know, it's incumbent upon us, and in a way I'm kind of echoing what, what Bruce said during his rant, in which he seems to say every year in his rant, which is that it's incumbent upon everybody in this room to help the regulators uh, uh, understand the risks and the threats and how they can best mitigate those risks and threats. I, I just have, I have a lot of thoughts about IoT security, but you know, I, I think the, the important thing for us to remember here is that these are insecure devices that are internet connected and they will be um, harnessed for bots, which will be used to uh, generate cryptocurrency, which is the future. <laughs> <laughs> So in summary, the children Getting in there early, I see. The, the summary is that the children are our future. Cryptocurrency is the future. Perfect. That's what I, I'm living in the matrix. Fuck this place. That was like, good. Damn, that was good. You it up. All the way. That's that's Jack's great skill. He plays the long, long, long con. It's it's really, really good. Any uh, questions or comments from the uh, the audience? There were no schmooballs thrown, so I take that as a victory. Skyler. Oh my God. Oh, yes. <laughs> I threw up a little in my mouth, so I can't repeat the question. <laughs> Thank you. <Yes. laughs> well, if there's anything better than internet connected things that are misbehaving, it's going to be putting them on in completely transparent, non private, immutable blockchain so that none of the mistakes can ever be fixed. So I, I'm all in favor of that. And also it'll help heat your house. <laughs> yeah, BTUs for the win. I think we have a serious question back there from the man from Brooklyn. <laughs> He's like, shit, he does have the beard. It's either that or Unix admin. I'm not sure, I can't see. Okay, all right, Unix admin. All right. Uh, is there any chance that all the market will correct any of this on its own? Will the market correct the IoT security issue? Like, will our market Oh, yes, it'll correct enough? like at least 50,000 times. That's good. <laughs> Liz, do you think that, the, that there's enough force in the market to cause vendors to do good things when it comes to security? <laughs> <laughs> we, we only have millennia of proof to the contrary. <laughs> this time it's different. <laughs> Is that a John claude Van Damme thing? Like, this time will be different. I'll be fatter. Um, yes. There, there certainly is potential there, but the challenge I see is how the data is collected, what data is collected, and what we do with it. And um, there isn't time to get into it here, but if you want to see how something that seems like a good idea gets completely misused and uh, biases get cranked into it, look at the bullshit of shot spotters in major cities and the way the police respond to what sounds like, hey, we can triangulate and tell you where the gunfire is. It's like. If we want to, if that's a neighborhood we care about shooting people getting shot or, you know, in this neighborhood we care about the people that get shot, in that neighborhood we want to arrest the people shooting and the biases come out. So you have to use the information. Fortunately, we have a, a government that would never manipulate um, environmental data. Or even better, and Dope. try not to have PTSD to my day job where as the technology attorney that is negotiating with all of these vendors and the city departments, everything, it's again, tossing it back to the community and helping people understand that if you are trying to track uh, parking spaces, 
for example, there is no need to have the level of uh, the sensors and the level of data collection that are in something that is supposed to be as simple as, is this parking space in use? Like there is a benefit to taking advantage of, well, we've got a sensor here. If the city's controlling it or some, you, know, you have someone who's accountable who's controlling it, then sure. But if you're having vendors come in and put in devices, oh, well, it can do that. Like, I don't need a Ferrari. I live on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere, and I can't afford the gas that you need to get this finely tuned machine. So it's a little bit of both. And then also taking advantage of the ability to uh, hold the government, you know, the data is out there and encouraging and making sure people are doing what they're, you know, what they should be doing and what they have said they're going to be doing. Or if you want to know what the weather is, uh, you could go outside. That's you. Um, <laughs> if you don't want to go outside, you could send a drone. And if the drone comes back wet, it's raining. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if the drone is gone, it's really windy. There you go. Exactly. So, um, um, I'm, to, just to interject, because I never do that. Um, I, I think that's a really interesting idea, like the what can IoT, consumer IoT do for, from a greater good perspective? One of the projects I've been uh, working on in my house in my uh, spare time is um, actually uh, trying to build a, a sensors that live on the side of your bicycle that, uh, with a camera on the front, so when you get passed by a car, it logs your GPS coordinate, it logs the distance the car away, uh, was away from you, and takes a picture of your environment. Um, and the idea is to integrate that into the existing IoT bike computers that we have so that we um, can upload information about where bikes and cars are having the closest incursions and then provide that to Federal Highway, to State Highway, and that kind of thing so that they can design better roads. So. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that's the place where there's already like an IoT device that people are just using because they're assholes on Strava and want to be faster than their friends. But we can actually get um, we can actually get safer roads with like five dollars of extra parts bolted on the bicycle. So I think there's opportunity for that. Virus has a question. It'll be the last question on this one. So I'm going to give it to you, Virus. Does my bike have a bike? <laughs> No, but I have let so much magic smoke out making that goddamn thing. Like, I, I, I cannot tell you how much, how many times I've burned myself and my parts doing that. So, um, also, I used my internet connected phone to order my son to bring me coffee. So that was a good utility of consumer IoT right there. Anyway, um, with that, I thank you, Liz and Wendy, for your uh, comments and the debate. Next up is the Battle of the Jacks. Um, Dodger is going to go first on the con side. And, and, and for those that don't know, I mean, he said he, he, he's kind of into the cryptocurrency thing just a bit, um, just, a, just a scotch. Uh, and he and I have had some bitter trench debates about the uh, entire nature of cryptocurrencies and things like that. So I do, I really want to put him on the spot and have to have him argue with himself. So this will be a very like therapeutic kind of thing for him. I'm afraid he might cry as he comes to some of these conclusions. So uh, we just have to be nice to Dodger. Um, he's digging through his bags. Can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'm going to start the clock. You're up. Go. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> um, j just to be clear, nothing I say here today is uh, you know represents my employer <laughs> or me. <laughs> <laughs> are my opinions. <laughs> um, the, kin the concept of cryptocurrency is, is really quite extraordinary. <laughs> but the value of a coin seems to be entirely arbitrary. When people try to justify the price, the logic isn't there. It feels like all they're doing is creating money out of thin air. <laughs> I can see his soul leaving his body up here. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> In theory, Bitcoin should be great for making payments peer-to-peer. -peer. Cutting out the banks and middlemen means that it shouldn't be as dear. But while <laughs> But while that's great in theory, in practice it's not true. Because you have to pay huge transaction fees to get your payment to go through. Wait, are you doing a, uh, Are you rhyming? 
He's like, you knew this was coming. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> of course I knew this was coming. And by the way, your son is going to get a lovely present, the Practical Joker's Handbook. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to send him some Bitcoin. <laughs> Another major obstacle is the crazy volatility. When it comes to a store of value, what you really want is stability. Um, if your savings have in value from one moment to the next, I'm sorry, but let's face it, Bitcoin doesn't pass the test. Some claim that the blockchain is the breakthrough innovation, with Byzantine fault tolerance enabling true decentralization. But with proof of work consuming energy by the multi-megawatt, we have to ask ourselves, is this good for the environment? And the answer is, it's not. What about smart contracts, some of you will say? Well, that might be fine if they weren't getting hacked every other day. <laughs> I believe as much as the next man in the wisdom of the crowd, but it didn't work out very well for investors in the Dow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to storing cryptocurrency, you'd better hope you don't get hacked. And if you store it in an exchange, there's a pretty good chance you'll never get it back. No regulation means no compensation if you suffer loss. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at what happened with Matt Gox. <laughs> when it comes to spending Bitcoin, what's it really good for? You can't pay your taxes with it. You can't buy beer at the liquor store. But it sometimes feels like the only real use of Bitcoin is to spend it buying drugs and hiring hitmen on a dodgy <laughs> dark web market. In conclusion, <laughs> whether you think that cryptocurrency is good or bad, the question we must address here today is, is it the future or just a fad? The answer will make the Bitcoin fans a little hot under the collar, but for now, it's clearly safer to stick with the good old U.S. dollar. Sit down, you're embarrassing me. You realize I'm going to get fired tomorrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to defend cryptocurrency, man. You're fired. Bitcoin's down five dollars in the time you gave that talk. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, and, sorry, has yeah, I was gonna say. And, and the thing about this is, Jack, Jack, not Jack, has to be uh, pro Bitcoin. He's about the most cynical person on the planet, and he has to be like the opposite of this. So I'm, I'm super curious. Are you ready, sir? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's, it's interesting that, like a lot of people that cling to outdated uh, technologies and ideals, they, they rest on these edifices like the buildings down the road here in Washington, D.C. that represent a past time. And while it was beautiful and elegant and eloquent, it was, you know, bullshit. Uh, um, yeah, and I think it's interesting somebody with that accent is uh, talking about the strength of the dollar because uh, <laughs> let's... Let's Brexit your pounds, <laughs> um, which is an interesting point because uh, one of the, the challenges uh, is that there is more and more uh, information that, uh, that cryptocurrencies are manipulated. And um, well, that was one of the first straw men in the arguments against cryptocurrencies because I don't know if you are aware of this, but we sort of manipulate our own currencies or the governments no. manipulate them against us. And... Um, I think the, the key thing about everything wrong with cryptocurrency is that we are in that early phase. I mean, look at where we are in computing 50 years in. It's a shit show, right? We're, we're battling to make it less bad. This is much newer. Uh, but it's disruption, and disruption provides opportunity. And in the early days, people get hurt. Um, let's look at the, the housing crisis and the, the economic collapse uh, some years, you know, a decade ago. Um, it's, it's not like Bitcoin is the only way to lose everything because somebody else did shit behind your back. Um, and, and there are a couple of you know, very specific things in these early days. Who's making the most money off of this in the first few years? It's you, right? It's, it's a technocracy. It's, it's us dumb people that thought it was kind of cool, played with it, and have Bitcoin that was worth $2 at one point in time. And 
blow it on trips and whatever now, and we're, we spend it irresponsibly. But uh, if we're going to make uh, vaporware millionaires, it's okay if it's uh, if it's you guys. I mean, let's let's be blunt, <laughs> let's be selfish. Um, you know, and just but it is the early and messy state. And there are a couple of other things. I think that cryptocurrencies have a place. But as we go through this, we're learning about we're learning new lessons in crypto. We're learning about robust and distributed models. We're learning how to make blockchain actually useful. Now, someday somebody may have an actual application for it. Um, uh, but um, when we get to that day, uh, we're, we have a, a decade of lessons of failure. And we have a distributed trust model. And they don't always work, right? And so we're working our way through these things, but we're learning a lot. And it's important to note that we have the manipulations of governments when we do this. And the volatility, like I said. Has anybody watched, uh, anybody uh, spend a lot of money on a house in Las Vegas 15 years ago? Or in South Florida 15 years ago? Uh, how'd that work out for you? Right? You know, you were uh, trapped in that thing. And um, so it's a mess. Another thing that you have to address if I'm going to Are you defend... pro or con? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, 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 here's what I'm saying is it's a shit show. On, on <laughs> it's a shit show, but we're learning in the process, ah. and it is providing value. It is making some of our friends rich. It builds character. It builds character. We're learning things that we can apply elsewhere. Um, the volatility. So it, a lot of the comparison is to the U.S. dollar or other things. And my point is the things we're comparing it to and saying it doesn't compare to, they suck too. So we have something that has come out of our communities, out of the technology communities. There is a challenge from criminals to exploit it, as there is as soon as people realize there's money in things. Remember when the coolest hacking was web defacement? Then people figured out they could make money. Right now we're in this phase where it's easy to focus on the criminal element that's come into this it's inevitable. We figure out how to weed it out. Um, the criminal element um, is also bypassing, you know, what's criminal? I'll tell, uh, I don't know. Ah, ah. All right, all right. So, <laughs> thank you, Jack. <laughs> Daniel. Now, before I let Dodger rebut, I will rebut a bit that I think that your poem was a bit of a sales pitch for Zcash. If I'm not mistaken. I didn't mention Zcash at all. You did not mention Zcash, <laughs> but you mentioned almost verbatim all the weaknesses that Zcash addresses, which was strange to me that it was so coincidental. So you may not get fired. I didn't mention privacy once. You might get a raise when you go back tomorrow. <laughs> this is what cryptocurrency does to you people. It's like crack. It turns you into bad people. <laughs> I was always a bad person. You are, yes, as long as I've known you. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down. I'm going to give you a few extra seconds, so you can start rebutting now. Cool. Um, there's no doubt that, that there's a bubble in the cryptocurrency space. And I say that in, in, in all seriousness. Um, who here actually was around and working in the dot-com world back in 99? Stick your hands up. Right? You remember what it was like. There were people out there raising hundreds of millions or tens of millions of dollars at least um, based off the back of a stupid PowerPoint and some, you know, wild projections. And a lot of those companies, you know, that, that, that existed around that time and, you know, were worth a billion dollars went bust. <sighs> Moose coin, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to ICO this right here, right now. You're, you, you do realize that it doesn't look like you're right, that you're riding on. <laughs> you know, I don't think you're taking this entirely seriously. Bruce, Bruce I, I hope you're proud of your. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who this person is. Uh, certainly not. Can, can you get off the goddamn stage? <laughs> I don't know that he can actually. <laughs> Just don't um, leave stage front. You know, a, a lot of those companies, uh, Pets.com, Web... I'm just going to keep on going. <laughs> that's, that's fine. This has gone so far off the rails. <laughs> Whose idea was this, by the way? Just <laughs> Heidi's. <laughs> um, go on. Go on. Jack, Jack, I think we found your comedy a bit. If you want to take this on the road, we'll all go. Like, no, we'll just, all just go uh, yeah, so, so we, we had the pets.com, we had the web vans, they, they, they collapsed, and, uh, and then there was this little company called Amazon, which hit a peak of $106 during the, during the dot-com bubble. And then 
disappeared down to about six dollars. Now, how much is it worth? Everything. <laughs> Every, yeah, you can. Who would have thought back in 2000 when the bubble burst that you know 18 years later you'd be ordering snow blowers, uh, you know, via Amazon Prime to to uh, uh, you're waving that ten out of the, t ten out of ten. Great, thank you. <laughs> Perfect ten. Um, so yeah, I, I I actually agree. I think you know there there there's a bubble at the moment. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was interrupted by a moose. <laughs> and um, so typical of cryptocurrency. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there, 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 there is a bubble. There is some interesting technology behind this, but. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it's something I, I didn't address, and it is, it is a very positive thing about cryptocurrencies. Once we work the kinks out, one of the beauties of distributed systems that are not tied to governments is the world is more and more global. In spite of some attempts at balkanization by some countries, we are more interconnected than other. And our currencies don't reflect that. Our traditional currencies don't reflect that. This global technocracy-based currency actually brings us together in a global platform <laughs> with a uh, <laughs> and gives us a global currency we're not there yet but we're getting close to a global currency to match the global technically connected world and it is the future you luddites can fight against it but it is the future <clears throat> that was that was great <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Actually, uh, uh, saw the other day somebody, uh, maybe it's been somebody in this room, um, going off about calling uh, people Luddites because they're like Luddites were craftsmen that did things by hand for a reason. Wait, wait, so I missed. I missed the most important point. Oh, okay. John McAfee says <laughs> McAfee coin is the future. <laughs> his his coin of the day. Uh, he's not going to do any more coins of the day until tomorrow. So. Um, if anyone followed McAfee, that was actually kind of funny. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, well, thanks to Jack and Jack for your enlightening opinions on uh, cryptocurrency. Are there any uh, questions or comments from the uh, peanut gallery up here, the peanut gallery in the crowd? Wendy? <laughs> I was looking out. Oh, you're gonna, I thought you were no, no, the no, microphone. No, 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 I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. So, yes, uh, I just want to give a shout out as I did some reading up on this. Um, one of the best, most entertaining and accessible books I've read is Attack of the 50-Foot Blockchain by David Girard. Have a look at that. It is, it is great fun reading. I was, instead of partying, I was reading it last night. But yes, he points out a lot of problems with, uh, with cryptocurrency and the blockchain. And yes, you know, there, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, cons going on and, and Ponzi schemes that have just changed the names and everything. Um, but hear me out, just what if we take the blockchain and we put it on the blockchain? That, that'll fix everything, right? You want that, that, that'll be good. And once we get people on the blockchain, you know, a nice immutable, you know, integrity protected blockchain, then there will be no opportunity for any malignant growth and we will have cured cancer. So there you go. Yeah, Man, it was hard to dig through the snark. Uh, Branson. So uh, Branson's question, where he used the term responsible encryption, uh, I'm going to substitute the term backdoor. Uh, the, uh, the FBI would like, I know you're quoting, and we can quote assholes all day long, but as it turns out, they're still assholes. Uh, responsible encryption is backdoored encryption. Um, so I got head nods and no applause on that. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, at the end of the day, I think that the question was really ultimately, how do we deal with the fact that there's going to be, if I may summarize, regulatory and uh, law enforcement concerns around the uh, encryption and transparent or lack of transparency and pseudonymity uh, associated with these currencies? Currencies. Um, Jack, do you have any feelings on that matter? Which, which is you, and the one I'm looking at, guy. Like in Britain, do they look at other people when they talk to them? Yeah, or are they yeah, like, hey? Yeah, 
Yeah. So, so w w one of the smart things that, that, um, that the authorities have done, uh, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network has regulated cryptocurrency exchanges that exchange cryptocurrencies for fiat currency, for dollars. And it's very smart because what they're doing is they're placing those regulatory uh, uh, toll gates, if you, if you want to phrase it that way, at the on-ramps and the off-ramps of the cryptocurrency space. So it means that when you buy your cryptocurrency, you do so through uh, an exchange, which if it's in the US, must be registered as a money services business. They must maintain the proper books and records. They must make uh, suspicious activity reports if there are patterns or large transactions which indicate uh, money laundering. And then when you sell it, again, for dollars, if you make a profit, then you are going to be liable on the taxes. And we know that uh, I've just been cut off. Apparently so. <laughs> yeah, it's like, good, good job. Uh, we're, we're glad, <laughs> glad to have done that. Is that a different than, I mean, are those regulations different than conventional banks? Like when you move money in and out of the normal banking network, or are they just applying the same brush strokes to say cryptocurrency, or just the you know banks in general? Like when you take money out of the bank. Well, tr try going and, and lodging you know hundred thousand dollars in cash into your bank account. Right. And see how they react. Right. Right. Fair. Is there a reason you, you cut it? Can we bring his mic back up? Because I was talking crap. Yeah. He was talking crap. The microphone is actually the IoT microphone. Recognize the crap coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, questions, other questions from the audience? In the back, ish. What do you think of governments starting their own cryptocurrencies? Governments starting their own cryptocurrencies. <laughs> so, I mean, if they're starting their own, if they, you know, if they're starting something like Bitcoin where the, where, the, where the coin is native and created as part of the mining process, that's one thing. What they're all looking at, as far as I'm aware, is putting dollars or euros or pounds or rubles or whatever it is on a blockchain. Um, just tokenization, any of you who are familiar with Tether, um, that's exactly what they're thinking of doing, except it'll actually be backed by real money rather than, you know, whatever Tether's backed by. <laughs> Postal reply coupon coin, are you suggesting? <laughs> so I, I guess my, my, I have a question around, like, I, 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 I saw a chart the other day that was like the, the market cap of the top 100 coins, and I didn't realize there were even 100, and then that's when I realized there were far There's more than 100. 800 coins right. so, that, that are um, listed and have any value whatsoever. And somebody the other day posted a, a, a meme that was like, hey, I already have cryptocurrency. It's my Sephora uh, beauty rewards card. Um, and it's effectively like all these, it's like company script now, right? Like if you want to participate in this little ecosystem, you got to buy into coins here, you got to buy into coins there. So rather than having like this thing, the dollar or the euro or whatever that we all recognize has this value and I can exchange it for things like to participate in this ecosystem now I need to go buy this thing that supports the banana farmers or this thing that supports whatever the fuck it is um, why is that useful for me to have to put my money from a general purpose currency into lots of little currencies that I can only spend in the little ecosystems that they're involved in so the the the, the thing that differentiates fiat currency from from, from cryptocurrency at, at its core is that peer-to-peer -peer element if I want to send dollars to you there's some fucking money. Wait, that was peer to peer, baby. <laughs> you can keep it. It's actually real money as well. <laughs> so while he regroups, I, I want to make a point about that <laughs> because I... you're, um, you're, you're, again, we're back to the fact that we're at an early stage. You, you're, having dollars is useful here. Having dollars isn't useful in Europe. But what we've done. What we've yeah. dollar bills in Norway don't do you any good. U.S. dollar bills don't do you any good. But we have a mature economy. We have a mature economy where we have an abstraction layer, which is a credit card or a debit card, and it does the magic of bridging the various currencies for us. We're a long way from that with cryptocurrencies, but we have an abstraction layer. I don't use dollars or pounds or krona as I travel around Europe. I use a card. It does the math. Yes, I pay a little extra for it, but we've abstracted away that <laughs> diversity. <laughs> you need to go to better clubs. <laughs> Hey, can you, let me let me show you. Give me, the, give me my dollar back for a second. <laughs> give me my dollar for myself. Hey, take a picture of this. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
But, I, you know, although I can throw things a long way, I can't throw dollars from London to here to pay for, for an HBO I, I totally ticket, agree. I totally you know. agree. So, uh, it, the, 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 the credit card system involves so many layers of abstraction. You've got your bank, you've got the bank's card processor, you've got the credit card network, and then you've got the, the opposite on the other side. It goes up and down these channels, and everybody takes a little, little sliver off. Um, and obviously, with, with the cryptocurrency, you've got transaction fees, fair enough. But there, it, it's an experiment. It's an exploration of this new technology. And we don't really know exactly where it's going to lead us. But, so, um, uh, in dollars, so, you know, Hedinga, Bob, Bob Hedinga, the digital bearer certificate stuff that he bearer did? Bonds. Bearer bonds, baby. Bearer bonds. So, uh, uh, Hedinga had this idea uh, back in the 90s around digital bearer certificates. And so the idea was that it was all PKI based. It wasn't uh, a proof of work kind of shit. It was just like, I can create this crypto structure that allows me to make a digital certificate that actually is the thing that holds the value, right? Centralized. So, what? Centralized. So, yes, it was centralized. But um, it was also then would be widely recognized and could be centrally regulated and used and whatever. Because one of the values of having the current electronic fiat system that we have is that even if my dollar isn't good in the UK, I can go to the UK and my bank is part of the global financial system and my money has some known value to me when I go over there. And we've kind of made that work. So if you go to something that looks like a bearer certificate, you still get that advantage. You take out all the middlemen without all the shenanigans of like a bajillion coins and people taking up more electricity than Ecuador. So um, which to me seems more ideal because they can sit statically around and no one has to prove the work. They can just like wait and then when I need the certificate, they come out and do it. So it's not that there's not art here. It's just that we finally had something that had enough people in it that got mass and has billions of dollars of market cap, right? And then we've all running after that. But there's other ways to have electronic transfer of, ca of, of, of uh, uh, cash without having the middleman associated with it. proof of stake. Yeah, exactly. You know, there, there, there are different ways of building these things. And, and what, what's actually happening, I think, at the moment is, is you know, the, this interest in cryptocurrency and the booming price is funding research into this space. And I think it's really cool that we're funding research into really cool applications of technology, decentralization, talking about, you know, potentially the future of where the web goes so it's not quite so decentralized, and also research into cryptography itself. Yeah. Fair. All right, um, we got to unfortunately wrap this and get ready for closing ceremonies. So um, I do want to thank um, first all you all for putting up with this um, uh, experiment that we ran. But I really want to thank uh, uh, Wendy and Liz and Jack and this guy here uh, for participating. Uh, thank you very much in, in participating in the debates. Oh, and, and we have gifts. We come bearing gifts. So you get mini moose heads. Uh, to take home with you and hang on your wall. Cool. Um, so you, you, they're, they're cute, they're cuddly. Um, you can probably virtualize that and put it on the blockchain and it'll work out for you. Anyway, uh, we're gonna have closing here in about uh, five minutes. Oh, we got, uh, Ted's been burning, or, uh, uh, burning DVDs out in the lobby, so if you wanna buy DVDs instead of downloading stuff later on, he's got them all for sale out there. Jack, Jack, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> There's still people who claim that.